Well, hello everyone. It's Saturday evening. Hopefully you're sitting around and already had most of your dinner plans behind you. And just like me, maybe you're finding yourself bored. <laughs> I am standing in my kitchen looking around at things to do. And of course, paint's the first thing I go to, obviously. It's the easiest thing I know to do and uh, doesn't require a lot of tools. I am looking through a lot of old things that I have in vases and accessories and things that really don't work in my colors or in my even the feeling of these pieces. Come on, and when you're coming on here, say hi to me. Let me know you're there. I see a lot of people jumping on. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing. I so appreciate that. Can't see your comments right now. I'm gonna be painting this vase, this drip pottery piece that really is kind of in the Western and rustic vein. I guess you could use it in pretty much any decor, but it just doesn't work here. But what I love is this copper part on top. This is not an expensive vase, and I've had it for a lot of years. It has some beautiful brown brownery in it rather than greenery that I'm going to keep. But um, just wanted to show you a way that you can use these pieces and keep the part that you like without painting over it or just killing all the great detail. I'm using the color linen. I'm using my old tried and true sable brush, and I'm just gonna show you a great little technique that I use and that maybe you can use on something that you've had around your house and maybe give it a second life. I'm also going to be putting an antiquing on this beautiful carved stone piece here. And I know you're probably cringing at that. It's a nice piece, but it's just too uh, nondescript for me. I've got to do something to it, so I'm going to antique it. Many bronze and many carvings are antiqued. This happens to not be, and it sits against a wall that's very much this color, so it just goes away. So I'm gonna antique that, as well as I wanna show you this piece. This was one of these that I did in my other house, and I painted it to match a lamp, if you guys remember that, but it was a great vase. But again, it just didn't match in my colors, and I needed to tone it down because it was a little too metallic for my other house but it uh, works now in another room. So I'm gonna keep it as is, just wanted to show you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I'm gonna use my sable brush and I'm gonna show you, I started there just to kind of get an idea of what I was going to do, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna concentrate around the very top of this where this paint is dripping now on the base and I'm gonna kind of emulate that and work back into the copper right now. Then I'm gonna show you how I get that subtle uh, effect. Put on a few rows. Just kind of get going and paint up into your detail that you want to keep and where that turquoise is meeting into the glaze technique of the metallic. I'm going to show you what I did with my finger. It gives it a great look. I just took my dry finger and rubbed down on this and pulled it down into the turquoise. Now, I got a little on my finger picking back up, just kind of using my finger to do the subtle technique, wiping it off on a paper towel, and just keep using my finger to get, just to get a subtle little brush stroke in there that I can use to bleed back into the piece I want to keep. Now, when I get down into the body of this piece, as I go back around, it'll be dry enough that I can then just paint right over the bottom and make it solid down there and get the solid going in the bottom of the vase. Just at the top, I wanna kinda give it a soft bleed back into the pretty copper and keep the copper, if at all possible. So using my finger and a rag, I'm gonna do that. So stay with me here. And if you're new to our paint products, say hello here that you'd like to have a free sample. I'm gonna send you a link to get that and uh, introduce you to these great products that will allow you to paint accessories, glass, metal, vinyl, wood, anything in your home pretty much you want to uh, transform into something new and usable and fresh again, just like this vase. This one was in my garage and I had already given up hope for it, but I always love the shape, this ginger jar shape that it has, but I wasn't probably ever gonna use it again and I had almost had it slated to go out to, uh, down to work because we got these colors kind of going on there. I could have used it there, but again, got a lot of accessories there already, so it just had never left the garage. I was getting a lot piled up in there just like I'm sure many of you guys do the same thing. What do you do with it when you still like it? Then again, you don't know where you're gonna use it. So I end up keeping stuff, just thinking I'm gonna use it somewhere, you know? When you have something nice, it's like, why do I wanna throw that out? So just using my finger to blend, and if I don't like it, I just pull back through it until I get the look I want. I'm trying to give it a translucence here, so I get that artsy feel from this piece. 
And if this ultimately ends up being too white, and I don't like it, I'll just go over the whole thing with the Vintage Brown Antiquing Gel. And I'll see that in a minute once I finish here. I may go from the bottom up with the Antiquing Gel and darken it from that way, just to give it some more interest in the piece. I don't quite know. I like to do these things and just kind of fill them out. What about you? When you're doing something, I don't like to have parameters. I just kind of have a basic idea of what I'm gonna do. And then just let it tell me what it needs me to do to it. That's a little insanity, <laughs> talking bases. I've had some furniture that's told me what it needs, I think, in the past. And just try to uh, do something that flatters the piece, right? That's the goal, is do something that looks like it was meant to be on the piece. It's not always easy to interpret, but sometimes you can get a feel for the piece. And this is one of those that needs something artistic to happen to it, or it's just gonna be a dull little old vase sitting around. So we're gonna try to keep it in the character that it was meant to have. And I think I like it. We'll see. We'll see, just in a minute. So I'm dragging my finger through here. You can go up there as high as you want on the neck of this thing. Up to you. If you have something similar, I just throw these ideas out there so you can use your thoughts and take these ideas and kind of run with it in your own pieces that you have. And maybe it'll give you an idea of something you have just laying around that you could repurpose and reuse in your home. That's the whole hope. A vase is a vase, right? This vase would look as good as any other vase that you could go buy, so. I paint over art. I do all sorts of stuff when I get tired of it. If I like the shape of the artwork itself or the frame, I was just in my room there deciding what I had to go on a wall that I want to put a big piece of artwork on. And rather than going buying something, I have a big piece that I'm going to create the artwork for that. And I did that in my other house and I still have those. And I use those big, big pieces at work. And um, I thoroughly enjoy those pieces of art. And uh, I hope my son, We'll keep those one day when I'm dead and gone. I hope he'll keep those around thinking me when he sees them. <laughs> Probably he'll can them. What do you think about that? Um, but if he were to keep them, uh, that'd be nice to know that he would. But the great thing about them is when I see them, I look at them like, hey, I got a great piece of art that I bought at Restore for probably $20 for a frame that I couldn't even pay the shipping or the tax on something that I, I ever found anything that big. First of all, I don't know where I could find something that was probably six or seven feet tall and five feet wide. These were enormous canvases that I bought about, I think Craig and I bought six of them. Can't remember now, five or six. They were like hotel art and they were huge and we bought them for nothing. I love to find those again and I used those to make all sorts of poured artworks and put resin on them and they were so pretty and they look great. I kind of built our whole color scheme around them in our new offices, but there's a few that we haven't used yet and I'm gonna go grab those and paint over them. So I'll share those with you when I do and I'll show you where I'm, how I'm gonna come up with an idea for that for my room and I think I've got the idea already, but I'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna try to blend this out just a little bit more just to keep that artsy feel going right back up into the neck of this thing. Just keep pulling it softer at the, as I move on up here and let my brush do a little of it. It's doing a little, I'm doing a little with my finger. Not putting as much paint on now, just so I can keep it right to the neck here. Doing a little dry brushing. Just kind of softening actually where the two meet here. And I could flip it upside down and go into the neck of it and I might do that too. Just don't want to be a hard line there where they separate. So you see this kind of a variegated going down the ombre feeling to the vase here as it moves on down to the turquoise. Now I'm gonna paint over that turquoise so all you turquoise lovers don't get mad at me when I go over that in a minute. I just don't have a lot of that look going on. But I can definitely use this vase somewhere that I know. Okay, so there we go. What do you think of that as is? So now let's go to the bottom and let's kind of start painting that solid. And uh, then I'm gonna jump over here, after, let this dry, and I'm gonna jump over here and put the uh, antiquing on my eagle back here, my American eagle. So he'll have a little more of a standout. So I'm gonna put on or use my true applicator to go here and stipple this because if I don't, this is gonna be more than one coat. I'm gonna stipple it on there so I don't really see brush strokes. 
See, watch the brush strokes disappear. There you go. So that's what you need to do to get all that look to go away. Is a, And you could use a bigger brush now. You know me, I like this little brush. I like working hard for some reason. What have y'all done today? Anything interesting that you've done today other than stay indoors? Have you done anything extra extraordinary inside your home today? Tell me about it. I'd love to interact with you. And please be, please be sure to mention if you haven't ever claimed your free sample. So I can send you a link to get one. And you can start using these paints to do your things around your home if you'd so choose to do so. All right, so I'm going to get on a little stop and stipple. So you wonder what stippling's for. Here's what it's for. You see all these lines? Now watch when I go over that. You won't see those lines. Now, the reason being is, that's not to say we won't have to go over it again. We just won't have that striping to cover when we go over it again. So that means our coverage is gonna be much quicker on the next coat, okay? Even though we're painting on glass, it makes a fabulous first coat when you stipple like that. I'm using the color linen. I see some of you guys asking, what are you using? Now I'll get up into the neck of this thing once I can sit it down and uh, paint to the drip marks a little, little easier. Just trying to get this coat on first. Now I'm meeting myself. Okay, good deal. This thing got fat all of a sudden. <laughs> Stippling works great when you're painting on a slick surface, something like glass. Well, actually anything, but it really, really works great to camouflage any idea that you painted glass. Now, so what do you think just of this part so far? So I am going to peel all the turquoise because I don't have any turquoise in this room. I'm just wanting to keep the bronze part and then white on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to really watch how I interact back here to the bronze so I don't kill it. My paper towel is trying to hang in there with me. Try to go all around the whole thing here. I'm putting on a good coat, not anything crazy, but good enough that I can stipple. And I'm just going to stipple right back up in there so that'll give me that little soft blend back in there. Just enough. Just almost like a little makeup going on there. Just a tiny bit. See that? So we still have that handmade look without it looking like a piece of drip pottery. Sounds like Craig cracked a beer in there. I think it was a Coke. <laughs> it was a loud Coke. Stay with me, I'm going to be putting on the antiquing gel onto this piece of alabaster carved piece here. And I think that's really going to do this piece so much justice. I can't wait to see what it does to it, if it ruins it. Uh, I'll just paint it over in linen. <laughs> I don't think it will, even though the stone's very porous. I don't think it will grab it too much. I'm going to put it on and remove it really quickly. All right, so that's what we got there. And I'll go back around and make sure I have it up the same height all the way around. But using the Taru applicator gives me the best way to do that and to tie that back in. You can still see my little brush marks, but I think that adds to the texture of it. What do you think about that? So a great way to make something new that was old again. And I, like I said, I may antique that back and tone it from the bottom up to give it some weight at the bottom because all the brownery in the, in the thing that I'm putting back is like a sticks, but they're brown and kind of shaggy. So that's what's gonna go back in there. So I know I got a lot of brown coming out the top, so I don't want it to feel like it's just newly painted at the bottom. So I'll add some warmth to that in a minute. So don't think I'll get to do that on this live, but we'll try. All right, so on we go with vintage brown antiquing gel. And I'm gonna put that onto 
this white guy here. Now it has a gray base, which makes me think, wow, it would look great with gray with weathered wood over it. But I hesitate to put weathered wood over it for one reason. The wall that it's going against, everything here is kind of warm and in the gold and then more of those tones. Using the same brush, just kind of rubbed it out here on my terry cloth rag and that's what I'm gonna be using to remove this. So uh, vintage brown, as you know, you can dial it back using a dry or a damp cloth. So I'm gonna do a little quick test because I've never done this before and I'm just gonna paint right in this feather using this small brush because I don't need that to get around all of this detail. And just pull that back and I can already see I love it. And I think it's gonna be perfect for this. And tone this piece down, it's just too new looking and it's not new by any means, it's old. But it just has too much, um, what do you say? What do you call that? It's just too hot, just too hot. When I look at it, it's just nothing. It's just uh, boring. There, that's a better word. That's the simplest, better way to describe it. There's just no detail that shows up in it, and it's full of detail, but I'm not gonna go stand and look at it down close, right? I gotta get something in here so I can uh, enjoy this thing from afar, because that's the only way I'm ever gonna view it. Uh, do y'all remember the wing that we did when we were making the wing out of cardboard? This so much reminds me of that, because we were trying to variegate the feather from lightest to the darkest all the way down. And we'll probably do the same thing here, just to add a little bit of um, something to give it a little bit of variety as we go. So I'll put some heavier underneath the feather layer like that. So I'm thinking about it basically, thinking about how I put it on. Put it under here because that's the shadow and then pull it back across the rest of them like that and let it kind of hang in there a little bit. Let's see if we like that. Yeah, it looks a little messy at this moment. So I'll just go over the whole thing. Didn't like what I did. Isn't that the beauty of doing stuff yourself? Just do it any way you want. If you don't like it, paint over it. Y'all know that's my theory. If I don't like it, I just paint over it. There's no harm, no foul. The foul is not doing anything, just sitting around thinking you're gonna mess it up. That's the foul. But doing something and not liking it, just repainting it or whatever, that's where the true um, self-expression lies. You can't go wrong if you just get in there and do something rather than doing a big zero, you know? And I find that people who really enjoy their life are the people who uh, do things, experiment, do things. And they've made a lot of wrongs. They've made a whole lot of wrong turns. But along the way, they've had a lot of joy and they've had a lot of fun doing things that might not necessarily been the greatest move in the world, but they also had the experience along the way, so... I look back at a lot of my own life experiences and say the same thing. You know, it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be, but hey, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I know many of you feel the same way. Wouldn't trade it. Wouldn't trade all the heartaches and all the hardships for uh, what I gained along the way and who you are today, right? Kind of like painting. Get in there, mess it up, throw some more paint to it. As long as the paint doesn't run out, we're good. I think this is looking marvelous. I'll do one side, show you, so you can see the before and the after. I'll stop on his wing right there. Can you see the difference in that already from the camera? This is nothing. This is this is him with the antique, and I think from the front is where it's really going to make the most impact. Of course, that's where I'm looking at him from anyway. I still have a little white in my brush, but it's not hurting it. It's actually pretty nice blending in there. So he's got so much beautiful detail. And I'm gonna turn him up just a little bit like that so you can kind of see that underneath part. I don't take any time to do this. I'm gonna get it done pretty quickly. And I am using, again, Vintage Brown Antiquing Gel. It's a water-based antiquing. Unlike a wax, it's easy to control, it's easy to wipe away. And if I wanted to take more off here, I would dampen my brush, dampen my rag, I'm sorry dampen the rag, but I don't want to take off any more. I'm wanting to leave what I'm leaving at this moment. But if I don't like something, while it's still fresh, you can get in there and remove it with a damp rag. Now, every paint, every surface is different, but this is allowing me to move, remove it really easily. So don't wait. If you know you don't like something, don't wait around. Just get in there and get it off if it's too much for you. 
That's the best time to get it when it's still fresh, because the longer you wait, the more time it's had to soak and absorb into the paint or into the surface. This is not painted, but it might not move so easily. I wondered if this would move because it is stone. This is alabaster. Now, I say every time I'm going to take a before picture, and I never remember to do it. <laughs> I didn't again. I was going to take a before of this. Totally forgot it. I get excited about something and go, oh, I'm going to do that. And then I, I walk right over, get it, and that's the end of that thought process. <sighs> okay. I'll just find a picture of something similar, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so that got that whole wing done. So I'm pushing the product right down into all the little low areas. That's what makes it work. Down into the lows, then we leave it in there. When we pull it back, we're rubbing it off of the high. So there's one wing versus the other wing. See the difference there? Adds a lot of age to it, which I think is pretty. Now let's just get his head. That's the one piece that's been bugging me. This is front of him. And what I should have done is not done his head and let his head stay white. Since he's an American bald eagle. Let's see if I can do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back and leave his head white. I hope that'll make, that way it'll stand out against, against his body. So I'll darken it right here on his back. So it'll really make this pop right there. I'll leave that kind of heavier. Let me get his beak darker. Okay. So we're painting virtually, painting, leaving, making this our canvas, like we're painting a picture with the antiquing gel. Even though it's not a picture, it's still the same idea. Where you're highlighting, what you're highlighting. I'll leave his claws out because his claws, his feet, his talons here would normally be white. This rock would be white. I'm going to leave it white just to give it variety. Just to give it a little variety. And if I don't like it, I'll just add some to it. His eye, I'm going to recess his eye a little. But his head, I'll leave a little punched up. You might not be able to tell that, but I can see that difference. Now, something else I can do too is I can go put linen, the paint color, which is very close to this creamy color, on this head. And uh, bring just that head up a little wider if I need to do that. I might try that in a minute. Gracie, she's in my food. The crazy cat. Gracie, out. No, no. All right. I do feed this cat, I really do. guys. This might be getting rather boring. Get a little closer for you. Okay, I won't finish this while you're here because this might be making everybody sleep. But what I am going to do is come over here and do the head, just because I think I want to show you that. Let's see if we can punch up, just to make this head look just a little, just a little dry brush here, just to make him an American eagle. Not a lot. And then here, these feathers are generally white. Just brush a little on there. I don't want it to look painted. I'm going to rub it off. Just the idea of it is there. All right. I'll pull it down just so you can see it a little closer. 
and see it underneath with that with it and then without it. Y'all like that? I can't see a single comment, so I'm thinking they probably, they're just not doing their thing tonight. Nothing. Okay, guys, I'm gonna let you go, and I just want to share all the great ways to update and have fun with your accessories and pull some things maybe out of hiding or maybe things you've garage sold and found at good deals that you didn't really know what to do with and maybe you can uh, break out your paints and maybe try some things while you're home with uh, all this wonderful time on your hands and uh, get creative that's what i hope you do and if you again have never gotten your free sample say so right here i know thousands of you have gotten a free sample as of late so i'm so happy to send those out and you pay the 6.99 shipping and you're going to get that free sample along with our color card. So say the word right here in this timeline and let me know and I'll send you that along with my best tips video. I wanna send you both of those at one time, just in one little post. If you'll just comment, we'll send that to you immediately. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this evening and tomorrow as well. And who knows what I might drag out of my uh, reserve in here in this garage uh, tomorrow. So uh, I always enjoy getting on here with you and hopefully sharing something with you that might be fun. So I hope you have a great rest of your night and I look to see you very soon. Bye. Look at my hand. Ah, <laughs> I do get paint on me. Bye.